Welcome. Welcome to day one of our fasting. Good morning. Go ahead and share as you join. Welcome, welcome. May the Lord bless you. It's day number one of our fasting. Hallelujah. Welcome. Invite someone. I encourage you to invite someone that can watch with you. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Great things he has done. And greater things he's getting ready to do in your life. Amen. We give him honor and we give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Happy Tuesday to all. 
if you are joining for the first time welcome yes may the Lord bless you here today may the Lord touch you my God may the Lord open those doors in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth may the Lord open those doors that you desire my God thank you Jesus glory to God wherever you are connecting from welcome and good morning it's a pleasure to be here to minister to you amen let me say this one more time it is a pleasure to be here and it's an honor to minister the Word of God to you and your family amen hallelujah it is well Once again, we give God honor and praise. We welcome the Holy Spirit who is head of this ministry. Amen. We give God honor and praise for what he's doing. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Welcome Instagram, Facebook, and for those YouTubers, welcome. It is day one of our fasting. We are praying for the children. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are praying for the children. South Carolina, welcome. Good morning. Virginia Beach, welcome, good morning. Trinidad, welcome and good morning. St. Elizabeth, Jamaica, New Jersey, welcome and good morning. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Florida, good morning, Boynton Beach, welcome. Good morning and welcome. Let us pray. Amen. I am so thirsty. That fish that I had yesterday. We give God honor and praise. When we are able to eat something that we desire. Some people they can't have what they desire. They have to eat what the doctor said. <laughs> it's true because of their condition so let us pray amen glory to god father we just want to say thank you thank you for the word thank you lord god for this fasting lord we thank you for this gathering you said where two or more are gathered in your name you are in the midst it means that we have to call upon your name when we gather because we are gathering in your name you are in the midst lord we ask you today to take over 
take charge. Have your way in our midst. You said when we obey your voice and do your will, you will bless our bread. You will bless our water. And you will take sickness from the midst of us. And today, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, any children that is connected to this platform, whether their parents are here, family members, relatives are here, Lord, we ask that you remove sickness from the midst of us. Remove sickness from these children. Remove sickness from among us and disease in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the known and the unknown. Somebody went to the doctor and all they said, I didn't know. There were no symptoms. So Lord, the known and the unknown today, we ask you to remove it from among us. Anything that is not of you. Any food that our children might have had or is going to have that will not be beneficial to them. Lord God, I ask you to destroy it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you to remove every impediment out of our children's way. Lord, we ask you to remove every bad friends, every bad influence from among them. In the name of Jesus Christ, any gathering that they are going into, Lord God, and it is not of you, we ask you to destroy it by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this morning, Lord God, we place every children before you, ones that are near and the ones that are far, that are connected to this platform. Lord, we ask you to pull them closer to you Lord and for these people that you have brought to this ministry that are connected to this platform that desire to have children Lord I ask you to allow them to do things the right way in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth strengthen them Lord God to do things right Many are desiring to have a family, but they are unmarried. Lord, I ask you this hour to bless them with spouse, the one that you ordained for them, the divine ordained spouse, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give you honor and praise this morning, Lord God, even now, I cover myself in the blood of Jesus. I cover myself in the blood Lord, I cover myself in the blood. As you use me, Lord, bless my home, bless my family, bless my children. I pray against every attack of the enemy that is coming upon my children. I destroy it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Have your way, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you now. We welcome you now in our midst. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We welcome you now, Holy Spirit. Take over. Take over this fasting. Take over, mighty God. Let your will be done. Manifest yourself. Take charge. Take your rightful position among us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. We, I commit every soul that is here in the hands of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. I know many of you are at work. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Good morning. It is day number one of our fasting. And we are praying for the children. Yes. 
it is day number one of our fasting and yes we are praying you see many of you here are living in fear because of the lifestyle you choose to live and I pray I pray that your story change. Many of you here are living on edge because of some decision that you made a long time ago. Many of you have made covenant with the wrong person. But today we ask God that every covenant that we have made with the wrong people we ask God to remove it. Many of our children have made covenant, not understanding what they were getting into. Some of them even made blood covenant. So this morning we're going to pray that every soul tie that our children enter into we break it with the blood of jesus christ i remember i said we're gonna pray for children we are not only here to pray for ourselves many of us our children got into a soul tie they got bonded with the wrong person listen listen and listen good the same thing that happened to you it can happen to your children <laughs> the same thing that happened to you it can happen to your children so this morning we break every soul tie Amen. This morning, we break every soul tie that our children are into. The relationship, many of them don't desire this relationship, but they enter into. Hallelujah. We break it. Jesus, mighty God, oh Jesus, this morning we pray, my God. Jesus. 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 I'm going to read a verse. So many of us can understand. As even as women. The thing. The thing that happened to your mother. It can happen to you as a woman. And for this, a lot of women don't get along with their daughters because the same path that they took, it's the same path that their daughter took. Yes. Mighty God. In the book of Ezekiel, we're reading the word today. We're fasting and we need to know what we don't know. Somebody said, no, if you didn't know, now you know. Behold, everyone that uses Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, as is the mother, so is the daughter. 
They said like mother, like daughter. It's a true proverb. It is true. Like mother, like daughter. So I encourage you. This is why we have to pray for our daughters. We have to, yes, if you are here and you are a mother, pray for your daughter. Many of you don't start your family yet. You have not started your family yet. So you have to watch the pattern. As a woman, you watch the pattern that your mother took. I'm going to read something else. Many of us, we think it's not true, but it's true. And this is why the Bible said women must listen to older women so they will know how to handle business at home. I'm going in the word. We're praying for children. But there are some things that we need to understand that we have to break these things. Somebody go ahead and share this message. I know you will say you don't have time to share because we are into the word already. But I encourage you to share the word of God. Take a moment and share it. There are some people that want to see it. I invite you whenever we are fasting for the whole week to share this on your page. A lot of people receive Jesus Christ because they go to someone's page and watch the broadcast that we have and gave their life to the Lord. Someone was suicidal. Right here on this platform, they came and watch the broadcast because a relative share it and then they turn their life over to Jesus so I encourage you to share it a, a grown woman she said she was suicidal and a relative of hers shared this broadcast from El Shaddai prayer tower and that's what changed her life People are going through hardship in our family and we don't know because they don't talk. They hide it. They cover it up and suffer in silence. And this is why we have these kind of messages that go deep into the word and the truth so people can understand that they can receive their breakthrough even when they are home. They can receive Jesus Christ. They are not alone. This is why I go deep into my past with my testimony for people to be free. So I encourage you to share it so the people that you love can be released. Many of you don't know that you are in bondage. Your relatives are in bondage. Not because you have a job and you're educated. It means that everything is going well with you. No, there are some things that need to be broken in the spirit. And no one will tell you because not every church believe in deliverance. Not every church believe in revealing the truth. They said that you talk too much and you are too free spirited. They don't want you to be free because your eyes will be open and the truth will eventually come out. So I encourage your people of God, share the broadcast. Share it. Amen. If I knew now, if I knew then what I know now, my mother would be alive. The Bible said lack of knowledge causes people to perish. When you lack knowledge, you will, be, you will perish. When you don't know anything, knowledge comes from knowing. And when you don't know anything, all you're doing is traveling all over social media, tell everybody your life story, and they're laughing at you. They can't help you. Not everybody can handle certain demons. 
Not everyone can fight the demons that you're facing. So all it's going to take place, they're going to know your business and they can't help you. Not everyone is w w was anointed for your kind of problem. And this is why I will tell you, if God has given you a gift to sing, there is a reason why. You can sing your way out of your misery. You can sing your way out of any generational curse because it's a gift that was given to you from Almighty God. So when you begin to use the gift that God gave you effectively, people will receive their breakthrough. This is why it is good to know what you carry. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome. Welcome, Guyana. Good morning. May the Lord bless you here today. I know you love this ministry. Glory to God. We are in the book of Ezekiel chapter 16. Where I'm coming with something for women today. For the women right now. We have, some of us, we have daughters. Some of us, we have only sons. But we are a daughter from another woman. Amen. So if you don't have any girls... You are a woman's daughter. Here is the word. Everyone who make up proverb will say of you, like mother, like daughter. For your mother loathe her husband and her children, and so do you. And you are exactly like your sisters, for they despise their husband and their children. Truly, your mother was a Hittite and your father was an Amorite. Your older sister was Samaria who lived with her daughter in the north. Your younger sister was Sodom who lived with her daughters in the south. But you have not merely sinned as they did. You quickly surpassed them in corruption. I came to talk to somebody this hour. This is the word of God. It means that look at the genealogy. Look at the woman that gave birth to you. Look at the take a look at the life she lived. Look at the life you are living. Look at the life that your children, your daughters are living. People of God. First of all, we are not even supposed to get involved with certain men as women. Because they are wicked. And therefore we bring wicked fruit. This is why the Bible is telling us about the Amorite. The Amorite came from Ammon, which was from Lot, grandchildren. You have the Moabites and the Amorites. They are wicked people. So it doesn't matter how nice you are, how good looking you are, you sleep with an Amorite and you have children with them. Listen to me, those children are bad seed. So you have to pray against the curses from that generation. Yes. Ezekiel chapter 16, not 15. Ezekiel chapter 16. It said like mother, like daughter. You might have only sons. And you think you escape. You did not escape because you are a woman. You came from your mother. Look at the life that your sisters are living. Look at the life that your grandmother used to live. It is written in the word of God. And it's time for us to be clean. In order for your children. You see, we are starting at the root. You cannot kill the tree if you only break a limb. You have to go to the root of the problem. I just said it. God already showed me. When my sister died, my eldest sister, when she passed, she was in the hospital for a couple of months. And I remember I was just beating upon myself because I wasn't saved. God was speaking to me even though I was not saved. I was not baptized. And one of the things that the Lord said to me, if 
you were only obedient. You are disobedient. If you were obedient, if you obey my voice, your sister would have been alive. Because I know what I did in you. But because you are living in the flesh, you are out in the world, living amongst the Hammerites and the Ittites and, and the Jebusites and all those sites. You cannot do my work. According to the book of Ezekiel, um, Exodus 23, it said, If you are obeying my voice and live to please me, nobody among you will be sick. So you see, the thing didn't just start because your child decided to be wicked. The thing didn't just start because your daughter decided to be a scammer. It did not just begin because your daughter decided to have many spouses and many lovers. No, it started with your grandparents. The line that they came from. It's time to check yourself. Look at the people that you came from, the root of your tree. Look good and you will understand why your children behave the way they do. If you don't have children yet, if you check the life of your mother's siblings or your father's siblings, you will understand why you are the way you are. Sister Glenna, if you go back and check your grandparents, are your father's grandparents if you can find people to listen to you and while they're answering your questions you will begin to understand that the things that are happening to your daughters it happened before to your great aunties so don't just blame your siblings because you and them don't get along check your mother check Yes, your granny, check those people that are ahead of you. Two or three generations ahead of you. And you will know why you and your family members can't get along. You will know why you cannot keep a man. You will know why no man won't stay. It's a curse from way back when. Because your great grandmother slept with somebody that was not supposed to happen. It's not you. This is why, for those who use the Proverbs, like mother, like daughter, some mother cannot get along with your children. And it's not their fault. It started way back when. It's true. If you check if your mother were getting along well with her sisters and her brothers, Maybe that's why you don't get along with your brothers and sisters. Because it's some whole story. Maybe they raped that woman. If you dig deep, you'll find out that maybe your mother was raped by her brother. Your mother was raped by her, her uncle. Your mother was raped by her sister husband. Your mother was raped by her own father and got pregnant with you. And these things call mental problems. It causes different type of disability. It is true. A lot of these problems that we are having. Why many of us cannot even function in our marriage. Is because of the curse that was not broken. From our mother's side. We are blaming the men. They have their own baggage. We will get to that another time. But we need to look, sit down and really do an evaluation. Why your daughter. Why your daughter cannot find a husband. Your daughter was cursed before she was born by your own mother. Her grandmother. Maybe it's a grand aunt. They got involved in wickedness. Somebody said true because things happen to my grandmother and to my mother and to me and to my dad. It is a curse from the pit of hell. Today we will break it. You see how fasting can reveal 
what we have to reveal so we can pray for us to be settled. There are some women that have nothing to do with their mother. And it's not because they are hateful, no. It's because of the curse that's upon their mother that they have seen. I know God already told me if I was saved when my sister was sick, she would have been alive today because I speak the truth and who had to repent would have to be repenting and who have to pray would have to pray. But when you're not obedient to God, bad things happen to you and your family. How do you know? Exodus tell you. Exodus Exodus will tell you, mighty God, I came to talk to somebody here today. Stop fighting with your spouse. It's time to root out the truth. Somebody said, things happen to my mother and grandmother as well. Yes. You see, it's in the Bible. This is why we have to hold our Bible close to us, especially as women. I'm not only preaching to men. I'm not only preaching to women. I'm preaching to men as well. But there are some things, if you're not careful that your mother did it, it might skip you. It skip a generation and your children will do it. Yes. Hallelujah. I remember when I was younger in jamaica my my son's father my son's father's father was a deacon we used to go to his church deacon ratigan we used to follow him to church that's the best thing that i know about this family but my son's father's mother did not go to church and they didn't get along they always speak against each other. And I'm like, why is this family so dysfunctional? The man is speaking against his baby's mother because they didn't get married. He married a nurse who was also a pastor. So I'm here to let you know, don't knock your children. We are praying for children. Don't knock them. Look at the genealogy of the people that they came from, the bloodline. The bloodline. If you want to really check, remember, Boaz was an old man with, from a different background. We're talking about Bible. Ruth came from Moab. She came from a dirty place where men sleep with their mother. Men get their sister pregnant. They, yes. So Ruth decided, I'm not going to stay here. I married and the man died. I'm leaving with my mother-in-law. But her, the man that she was going to meet, his mother was a prostitute. Hello. Everybody said they want to meet a Boaz. Can you really handle Boaz? Because Boaz's mother was an old prostitute. So Boaz could not turn up his nose when he found out where Ruth came from. Because his background was not squeaky clean. Jesus. <laughs> I came to talk to somebody here this morning. It's time for us to stop fighting each other as relatives and friends because the root of the problem didn't just begin. If you cannot get along with your brother, it did not just start it. If you cannot get along with your sister, it, it didn't just start it. It's some whole thing that happened way before you were born. To always going at each other. To uh, Yes. It is a curse. It is a curse. There are some women that speak nothing good about their children. Especially their daughters. It's a curse. Because they know that their daughter is going to come exactly like them. Because of the curse. And no one is willing to break it. No one is strong enough to say, you know what? I'm going to make a difference. Today, that generational curse stop here and the generational blessing begins with me and my children.
We are talking about things that are happening. You see, let me share something with you. It doesn't matter how powerful an individual is. It doesn't matter how high they climb in their profession. It doesn't matter how successful they are. There is always this family problem. Some of them said I'm not going to the family reunion this year because I don't like that auntie or I don't like that uncle. It's in every family. None of us are squeaky clean. Why? Because it started way before we got here. And most of those people from our family that call themselves Christians, they did not pray for each other. They did not break those curses. So we were born into it. That's why David said, In sin did my mother conceive me. Because Boaz went to bed with Ruth and they had a child named Obed. Obed had a child named Jesse. Jesse had a child named David. And 27 generations down the line came Jesus Christ. So Jesus did not come from a clean place. This is why the world will know that he was born outside in a manger and it was acceptable to God. So wherever you came from, let me share this with you. Don't claim those curses. Today we pray that God Almighty break every curse that we were born into. We cannot change the past, but we can make a difference in the future. Today we pray, oh God, even if you don't have any daughters, you pray that the curse that you were born in be broken off of you. So your granddaughter, many of you don't have daughter, you have son, but your granddaughter will adapt those lifestyle because it's in the DNA. It's in the DNA. So if you have a child with a man and that family is always fighting, going after each other, the mother fighting with the children, and you have a child with that man, expect this daughter of yours to come up with those things because it's already in your blood. You have to break it. Root it out right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We break all those generational curses that cause chaos in family. It, yes. This is why there are some people that, that are miserable. And they don't know that they are miserable because of the curses that they are living in. And it's not broken. Some men, all they do is rape. They don't know anything about love. Because they were raped. Some men were raped as a child. And that spirit is still with them. And if you listen carefully, you heard that their father was raped. And he is a raper. Even though he have all these children. He messed with young girls. There was a man. I don't know what happened, but his wife died early and he have a lot of daughters and he had children with his own daughters, all of them. And these daughters became isolated. They did not mingle with society because they have been contaminated at a young age. He poisoned them. None would get married. They can't because there's a curse that they don't know it's a curse that needs to be broken. There are some women that tell you, I'm not getting married. I don't want any children because of what they have gone through. They were damaged at a young age and it makes them bitter. They don't know how to live among people. They are troublemakers. They are troublemakers. They don't know how to live. They need healing and deliverance. And because they didn't receive their deliverance, everywhere they go, they become torn in other people's flesh. It's true. Many young women that were abused and raped, molested. Some it was just emotional abuse. 
So it's physical abuse. And until this day, they have not gotten over it. No man can please those women. None. It's hard. Because they have not been delivered from that spirit of molestation. That spirit of rape. And they themselves become molesters. They want relationship that's not for them. That's where they see themselves because of what they have gone through. They're going with men that don't have nothing to do with them. They chase these men because they have not been delivered. And so they have children that they can't attend to because they never receive love from any man. They're trying to love men when that's not what the word of God said. It's true. It, this is true, Sister, Sister Guppy. This is true. This is why there are so many dysfunctional marriages in the church. This is why there are so many dysfunctional marriages in the church. They don't understand who they are. The man raped his sister. It happened in the Bible because it happened with David's children. And the bigger brother had to call a hit and kill his brother because he raped his sister Tamar. The girl named Tamar, the Bible said Tamar was pretty. And one of David's son raped her. His stepsister. So you see, these things have been going on a long time in the family. Why? If you check where David came from, back in those days, David came from Ruth, and in those times, men sleep with their sisters. Men have sex with their mothers. So this is why David lived in a living hell all his life. There was a time when David's son sleep with his concubines while David went to war. I came to tell somebody here today, none of us is exempt. Somebody say, yes. It is absolutely, absolutely true. It is true. David, this is why there was so much. He was a king. But even though he was a king, there were some generational curses that didn't get broken. So don't feel bad because you have a, a wound that need a band-aid. You might have only brothers. Your mother might have only boys. But check their daughters and you will understand what the word of God is saying according to Ezekiel 16. David, you see how many generations this, this thing jump over. Boaz was wealthy, but his mother was a prostitute. He was a different breed. And also, his father's name was Solomon. Boaz, the, the man that Ruth married, even though he was very old, he married a young woman. She's from a different breed. And the Bible seriously spoke against that. But God permitted it because Jesus Christ had to come. Remember, always remember this. All of the should be because of people we need to stop pointing fingers at each other. The reason why some people cannot get along with church with anybody is because they are living under the curse that was not broken. And today we pray that we go right back to the drawing board. We need to take ourselves back to the drawing board and examine ourselves. In order for our children to be free, we have to be free. Yes. So I'm only going to use words and scriptures from the Bible. Some people might be thinking this, you are directing it to them. But this is for every one of us. If it didn't happen to you, it will happen to your children. Because some curse skip a generation. 
Some curses will skip a generation. You might have been raped and it didn't happen to your children, but it happened to your grandchildren. Hello? Yes. When I found out that my mother was raped, I was like, what? Yeah. She was by a white man. I'm speaking the truth. I am speaking the truth because many of us are living under certain curses and we don't understand. We are pointing fingers at other people. We are directing these, these behaviors that we have to other men and their family when indeed it's our problem. If you're not free, your children cannot be free. So you can be sitting here talking about, I break it. I break. If you are not free, your children cannot be free. And if you cannot admit the truth, because until you accept the fact that something is wrong. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Until you can accept the fact that something happened in your family that you this is why it's good to visit those old people and talk to them and listen to them and hear what they have to tell you about your parents or your grandparents or your great great grandparents it's true because many of the times what they have to tell you is something that you have to pray over so many of us, we don't want to go and sit down with those old people in our family because they are, we think they're old. They have something to share with you. My children come quarrel with me all the time. They said, Mommy, you always talk about cousin. You always talk. I said, yes, because many times they are the ones who know what we need to know. And they will tell us. My mother was raped. I was raped. And I questioned my children. Were you raped? Mommy, what are you asking me? You see, many times they don't speak of these things until they get older. So you have to. You have to listen to your children. The thing might not happen to you, but it happened to your parents. So this morning we pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that any curses that we were born into, the known and the unknown, so yes, knowledge is power. We read in the Bible. This is why we have the word of God. And this is why when we are fasting, we go deep in it. It might not happen to you, but it might happen to your children. And their children. It might not happen to your mother. But it happened to your grandmother. And it happened to you. So this is why you have to dig. To find out what you need to pray over. Yes. Sometimes it could be something so petty. But it continues in the family. It, 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 it's a vine that needs to be destroyed. Somebody said, I found out that my mother was molested by her uncle. It skipped my generation, but I break it now from my five daughters in the mighty name. You see it? You see what I'm saying? It might not happen to you, but you have your children to protect. So today we pray against the things that we know about and the things that we don't know about. Mighty God, we pray against those curses. Sometimes it could be stealing. Sometimes it could be lying. Some people are, some people are open-faced liars. They bold-faced lie in front of you and don't even 
change a muscle in their face while they are lying. Some people cannot stop lying. And these things, it continued. Remember, Abraham lied. Isaac lied. Jacob lied. They are liars. It's a curse from the pit of hell. Not because some people are good looking and they have money. Many of them are struggling with some curses that continue from one generation to the next. Some people are struggling with these things. Some pastors are liars. They are thieves. This is why many of them are going to prison so they can have their prison ministry. Yes! They continue to lie. They continue to steal. Some pastors continue to live in prostitution because they, are, they need deliverance. So it's not just the people that's in the congregation. The leaders are struggling with the same problems. Hallelujah. So we're not knocking anybody here. There are some pastors sleeping. There was this pastor last year somewhere. I don't know if it's Maryland or Delaware. Some Baptist pastor. He was sleeping with his daughter. And his son was the one who exposed him. His son exposed him. His son right here in the United States of America. He's in prison now. They had to run a yellow tape around the church because he was having sex with his very daughter in the church. And she's a minor. And he was doing it for a long time. And he's a pastor. May the Lord deliver us. So you see, we need to know facts. We need to know what's going on. There are there are a lot of stories surrounding some issues that many of us are facing and we kind of have it hush hush we push it under the rug you need deliverance because that's causing you to not have good relationship with people outside many of you if you really receive that deliverance that you need the relationship that you are in you would not be in it Many people enter some relationship because of curse and bondage. Once they receive their deliverance, they don't want to hear that person anymore because it was the devil that hold you down. People of God, I remember when my grandmother died. I didn't know her well. I met her a couple of times and then when I came to America, she moved to America. I posted her picture yesterday. Beautiful lady, my father's mother. She told me, she said to me, how many children do you have? I said, I have four children. She said, don't have any more. And I asked why. She said, because I have 14 children. I never enjoy life. That's what she said to me. She said she never get to enjoy life because she have 14 children. She said I was one miserable woman. And I'm listening to this woman speaking this to me and I didn't understand it. That's what she said to me the first day I met my grandmother. Because I didn't grow up in her area. She's from Westmoreland and I'm from St. Catherine. Yes. She said, don't have any more children. I said, why? And somehow, I never gave birth since then. I don't know what happened. I never gave birth again since that. So this picture that I posted with her last night, I found it. That picture was taken over 20 something years ago. And when I was living in Florida, she was in Florida. I went to see her and uh, she was nice. She's tall. And she always have something positive to say. She was almost a hundred years old. She was losing her sight. When I 
that day when I took the pictures. And I'm glad that I took the pictures because that's all I have. And I'd never, I was never raised up by any grandparents. I was raised up with my mother and my great grand aunt. They raised my mother. So I have a little bit of the great grand aunt knowledge that they shared with my mother. I just want to say this right here, people of God. Study the family you came from. Don't only study one side because you only like that side. Study both the mother's side and the father's side. Because the thing might come from your father's side, but it didn't happen to your father, it happened to you. Some curse skip a generation and some blessings it will skip a generation so today we're going to pray that any curse from our mother side we break it right now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth any curse from my father side that will affect me and my children i break it right now you see we have to pray these prayers so our children can be free the thing might not have happened to you, but it happened to your children. So this is what you have to understand. That it has to be broken. Amen? It has to be broken. You have to pray against it. To release Jesus. Not only yourself, but your children and grandchildren. We pray and we break it. Anything that will hinder marriage from my father's side. Today I break it. People of God, it's time to pray. Anything that will hinder marriage on my mother's side. Today we break it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anything that will hinder. Yes. Anything. I'm going to go deep with this one. Anything that cause barrenness from my father's side. Today I break it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anything that cause barrenness on my mother's side. Mighty God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Anything Jesus, mighty God. Man Any problems? Any problems? Jesus. Any problems from my mother's side that causing my children to struggle, that caused me to struggle, today I break it. Any problem from my father's side that is causing me to struggle, that will cause my children to struggle, today I break it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God, any problem with the way Akasataya, people of God, it's time to pray. Any problem from your mother's side that will cause you to struggle. Today we break it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Any problem. From your father's side. That will cause you to struggle. Take out a bio koshia. Jesus. My God. 
any issue that lingers in the family from your father's side. Today we break it. Any issue that linger from the mother's side. Today we break it. Any curse that was set up to shame us. Today we break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that caused hindrance from the father's side. Today we break it. Any hindrance from the mother's side. Today we break it. Know that you have your own family. You have to protect them. You can't allow these things to continue. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Mighty God. Jesus. Loreko Soto. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercies. My God. You see how powerful it is to dig deep so you know what to pray for. Many of you, you're wondering why you can't get along with these people and you're related to them. Why your children cannot connect with your sister's children. Why your children you cannot connect with your brother's children. It's a curse from the past. Your mother could not get along with her siblings. You don't get along with your siblings. Your brother don't get along with you and your children. Your brother don't like your wife. Your sister don't like. Mm. It's a curse. And we cannot afford to allow these things to continue. Because our children will grow up into it. And adapt it. Yes. Many of you, your mother do not like your husband. Your father don't like your husband. Your father don't like your wife. It's a curse. It's a generational curse. Many of you. Your sister don't like your children. Your brother don't like your children. It's a curse. We are praying against these things from our children's life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They will like you but they don't like your children. They cannot stand your children. Mighty God it's a curse from the pit of hell. My God. It's a curse. From the pit of hell. Some of you, your very sister will sleep with your husband if they get the chance. Your brother will sleep with your wife if he get, it, if he get the chance. Because the thing started a long time ago in the Bible. The thing started a very long, long time ago in the Bible. Boaz was innocent. Ruth was innocent, but the family they came from was not innocent. The thing was not broken. How you know? If it was broken, then David's children wouldn't rape each other. If the curse was broken, remember, Ruth was a Moabite. Boaz's mother was a prostitute. If the curse was broken according to Ezekiel chapter 16. If the curse was broken. Then David's son would not sleep with his concubine when he was at war. So you see the curse continues. It's true. So we have to pray against these curses. The reason why your sister cannot stand you and your husband. Is because your mother used to be the same way with her sister. 
The reason why your brother cannot stand you and your husband, it's the reason why it's because he, your brother was the, your brother's father or your, yes, somebody was the same way in the beginning, in the past. It's not you. Don't blame yourself. The reason why you you are not even married yet, and you are up in age, because your parents went into some covenant. They were together and they did not get married. Some of these old people they did not get married because their hands were dirty. They were still messing around, so they were living as couples, but they were not married. And you're wondering how come you're at this age and you're not married? Let me tell you something. Today is the day that you have to break it. Every spiritual husband, you have to break it. Every spiritual wife, you have to break it, and not just from your life, from your mother's life aside and your father's side so it don't affect your children many of you only want to pray for husband and you want to pray for wife what about your children what about the curse that's upon you it's time to break it your pretty pretty daughter tell her she's not getting married that's a curse you're very handsome son. Look at you until I'm not getting married. The devil is a liar. Your beautiful daughter. You send her to school. She came out and she looked good and have bright future. But yet she's living with another woman. The devil is a liar. And we're buying it up. Your handsome son finished college. Graduate from school. And tell you that he don't want a woman. He want a man. That is a curse. And it's a sin from the pit of hell. And we rebuke that spirit. Let me tell you something. If you come here expecting me to preach for you to feel good. You're at the wrong place. I'm coming to you with the word of God. The devil is a liar. Beautiful my God, don't come here expecting for me to preach a sermon for you to feel good. That's not my name. My name is not Pastor Feel Good. No, that is not my name. That is not my name. I didn't come to make you feel good. Jesus. Glory to God. I did not come here to make you feel good. You see, back in those days, some of them were in church, but no one was preaching to them the truth. So they would still leave church and go home and have sex with their own children. There was a man that said he won't let no man touch his daughters. He touched them himself. And he was in the church. Why? Because the pastor was blind in the church. Blind cannot lead blind. Yes. Some men won't allow their sisters to get married. Because they want to sleep with their sister. Some women do the same with their brother. And the cycle continues. But today we chop it off in the root. We uproot it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. People of God, you don't need to pray somebody else's prayer when you have issues to pray over. Bring it out before God and say, Lord, change my story. I'm tired of living this life. There are some women married and still cheating on their husband. Because that's what their mother used to do. That's what their grandmother used to do. That's what the great grand aunt used to do. There are some men married and still cheating on their wife. Because that's what their father used to do. It's a curse. You have to break it. There are some women with Jezebel spirit and they come into your son's life and they twist his mind and turn him upside down and turn him into a complete finger. 
turn him into somebody else. Because I don't know what the word to finger means. Because I used to hear old time people talking about turn that woman's son into a to finger. So I presume to finger meaning that you're out of character. You're not who you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Yes. There are some beautiful women. They married and they can't stay with the man because of the curse in the family that they came from. And if you are not careful, it will happen to your daughter. So don't use pride and sugarcoat it. It has to be exposed. It has to come out so you can have a peaceful life. Many of you are ashamed to say it. That the man rape you. And it's killing you inside. But I came today to let you know it's time to open up and release yourself. Because if you don't release yourself, the curse will never be broken. They said it's a disgrace if you talk about it. You're trying to shame the family and you are the problem. You are the reason why because of the way you dress. The devil is a liar. It's a spirit of lust. It's a spirit. There are so many women who have been abused. And they can't talk about it. If they tell their husband he's gone, he disappear Because he won't understand. There are some men that have been abused. Molested. By other men. Not just women, but by other men. And these men, they cannot settle down in marriage. Because they need deliverance. Many of us are asking questions. God, when are you going to give me a husband? God have a husband for you are right. But you need to pray to God that that man that he have for you get his deliverance. Because he's going to come and mess you up. So we pray. That every forbidden relationship our children enter into for the Lord to destroy it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We are not here to throw words at anyone. We are here to help each other. The Bible said iron sharpen iron. So does a man sharpen the countenance of his friends. I have enough compassion because I know where God picked me up from. The reason why many people cannot function in the church the way they are supposed to because they need deliverance. They cannot stand their sisters and brothers in church because the spirit of jealousy is eating them up. They cannot stand the anointing that's upon your life because the spirit of jealousy is moving through them. Why? And it's a curse from the past. my God you see the reason why some men are still single and don't want to get married is because some of them entered into some covenant with some women that are under curse and that woman will never get married and you become so tied with that person waiting and 10 years pass 15 years pass and they're still making those empty promises it's time for that to change May the Lord change your story. We need to know who we are. We need to understand ourselves. We are not here to tear anybody down according to the word of God. We are here to build. To help these women fix their crown on their head. And hold their head up high. So their daughters can follow their footsteps to help these men to pull up their socks and walk right so their sons can follow their footsteps. Tony, I've been praying for you. You are struggling with some things. And, and I saw you this morning while I'm on the live. I saw you in the realms of the spirit. 
and anything that you are struggling with that's holding you back i pray for your release right now and if it's something that happened in your childhood that's holding you back i break it right now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth tony i pray for you right now anything in your childhood that's causing a burden that's causing an impediment in your life i break it i chop it off right now with this sword whatever they did to stop you as a child i'm chopping it from the east i chop it from the west i chop it from the north i chop it from the south anything in your life tony anything in your life that's causing impediment every bad memories every sad stories every curse that you were born into today we break it from your life in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and as i pray for you i see your mother i pray god strengthen that woman so she can come to her senses in the name of jesus because the children are suffering because of what's happening with your mother my god hey jesus I hear the Lord said, the problems that you guys are having, it's, it came from your mother. Because she's not as strong as she's supposed to be. So when you pray, pray that the Lord strengthen your mother. Jesus, say, mighty God, I, I see you struggling. And it's not a regular kind of struggling you're struggling. But I came to let you know as God liveth, her, I will hold you in prayer until you stop struggle. In the name of Jesus, because your struggle is spiritual. Your struggle is not physical. And I pray for you the way I pray for my son. Tony, I pray for you. Anthony, I pray for you the way I pray for my son this morning. I lift you up before God. And I ask him to cleanse you, to wash you, to purify you. And pray present you to the world my god jesus sata. i present fernand jefferson bryan before god this morning and lord i ask you to touch him from his crown of his head to the sole of his feet oh god i ask you this morning wherever he is located to remember him wrap him up jesus Mighty God. Hey! I, I, I saw you. And, and I saw you struggling. And the Lord said, this thing is spiritual. But you will come out. You will come out. You will come out. I pray that you will come out. Mighty God. I carry you like I carry my children in prayer. And I pray for your testimony. And this is what the word means when I said your testimony. Because I'm praying for you to come out. People of God, you're here and you have children. I stand with you and your children. Carol, I stand with you and your children. Mighty God, Sister Denise, I stand with you and your children. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I stand with you and your children, Sister Jackie. Mighty God, Wilfred, I'm standing with you in prayer. Petronia Bailey out here in Brooklyn. I stand with you in prayer. I stand with you and your children, Debbie Eversley. I stand with you and your children, Julene Suella. I stand with you and your children right now. Sister Samantha, I am standing with you in prayer. Kian Walters, I stand with you. Sister Valdine, Sister Ayacint, Sister Tamika, Sister Dana, I am standing with you. Claudia, I am standing with you. Sister Lorraine, my God, I am standing with you. Sister Lisa, I am standing with you. Sister Amy, Mati de Bebe Koshaya, Sister Carol Tinto, I am standing with you, my brother Michael. I am Bodo Doko Soto de Boko Shadabaka Sataya, Sister Marcia Jones, my God, my God, my God, I am standing with you right now. And 
Nani Kawaka. I am standing with you and your boy. Mighty God, Sister Glenna. It's time to turn around. I hear the Lord said you have to change your ways. I don't know what your story is, but I hear the Lord said you have to change your ways. My God, Beverly Campbell, Sister Samantha, Sister Jasmine, I'm standing with you all. I'm standing with you and your boys. Sister Jasmine Mamota Vale Aababo Koroboko Sataya. I am standing with you as the Lord as my witness. I am standing with you in prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sister Pauline, Sister Ivet, I am standing with you in prayer and I lift you and your children in prayer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sister Michelle, I am standing with you in prayer. I am standing with your children in prayer. I pray that doors will be open in this season in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sister Monica, I am standing with you and your kids in prayer. Sister Angela, I am standing with you and your children in prayer. Yes, Sister Debbie, continue to pray. I am holding you up in prayer. May the Lord release you into a new season, Sister Debbie Everslay. May the Lord release you into a new season, Sister Debbie Everslay. I pray that a whirlwind will come and when it ends, you will be in your new season god is getting ready to do the supernatural in your life in the name of jesus christ of nazareth sister donna i am holding you up in prayer and i'm standing with you for a breakthrough god will do it the lord said i am your god sister patricia i am standing with you in prayer i am standing with you i am covering you in the blood my God, Sister Stacy, I am standing up with you in prayer because the Lord is about to bless you. You are about to bear fruit. Hallelujah. You are, I hear the Lord said I should tell you, you are about to bear fruit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sister Keisha Ellis, I pray, I hear the Lord said, go for it. I hear the Lord said, go for it. He said he has commanded you to go for it. Sister Keisha Ellis, I hear the Lord said, go for it. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it will be well with you. Mighty God. Sister Kerry, I am standing with you in prayer. Chef, I am standing with you in prayer. Whatever is going on in your health, whatever is going on in your life, I am holding you up in prayer and it will be well with you. And this is for those who are watching, waiting to watch on YouTube. I pray that the Lord open doors for you on YouTube, for you on Instagram. I pray that the Lord open all your doors for you on Facebook. I'm praying for your doors to be open. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Sister Kerry, I pray for your daughter that she will never have encounter what you have encountered. I come up against every disappointment in your life and that your children will never endure it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I stand with you in prayer. Mighty God. For those of you that are here and you're on the fasting, I encourage you, we are fasting with no meat. So when you break your fast, don't touch any meat for seven days. No fish, no chicken, no lamb, no steak, no shrimp, no crab, no lobster, none of those things. No meat. Hallelujah. No meat. Watch what the Lord will do. Hallelujah. Watch. Watch what the Lord will do. Seven days, no meat. You can do it. You can do it. I pray that you receive strength to do it. So if you are here 
and you're on this fasting <laughs> if you are here and you are on this fasting grab your water grab your crackers my god it's day one of our fasting it's the 15th of the month and I encourage you many of you said you're not fasting I encourage you to come on this fasting with us for seven days the Holy Spirit Amen. Lay it all at the cross and watch what God will do. You see, the reason why many of us don't get any breakthrough, the Bible said we have not because we ask not. The Bible said we have not because we ask not. Hallelujah. We have not because we ask not so it is my prayer that whatever I've been holding you and your children back for the Lord to turn it around in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth he said you have nothing because you ask for nothing Jesus said until now you have not asked for anything in my name many of us we are up in church and we dress up and we think that is gonna answer our prayer you have to pray you have to do warfare. Many of you, you handle some curses from your mother's side. Some curses from your father's side. And because of that, wherever you go, people will despise you. Because you're under curse. You have to pray for those doors to be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mighty God. According to the book of Ezekiel chapter 16, the Bible tells us, it said, Behold these Proverbs, where they will tell her like mother, like daughter. And it's true, because many times we behave just like our mother. I said it last night. I was cooking and I just remember my mother because I was doing something that my mom loves to do. So we pray that the curse that they placed upon your family that you begin to separate yourself separate your children so you will be able to see the blessings the reason why your daughter said they don't want to get married there is a curse that they are under the reason why your son don't want to get married there is a curse that they are under and we break it today hallelujah the word of god it said Everyone who make up Proverbs will say to you, to say of you, for your mother loaded, it said like mother, like daughter. This is why it's so easy for us to adapt the principles of our parents, our mothers. It said like mother, like daughter, for your mother loaded her husband and her children and so do you. And you are exactly like your sisters, for they despise their husbands and their children. You are truly, <laughs> truly your mother was a Hittite and your father was an Amorite. He -la 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 -la. Many times the reason why we suffer so and we don't understand it. Because it's a curse that we are under. The curse didn't come from the man. The curse come from the family you came from. And that's why you'll end up choosing the wrong man. You don't want the man that God wants for you. You want the man that you like. And if you check out that man, he is under some curse as well. Because those spirits attract. Negative attract negative. It's time for curses to be broken. So Sister Gracia, I pray that any curse that you have been under, you and your sisters, 
It will not happen to your children. Be many times this is what happened. It moved from one generation to the next. And this is why we watch our children suffer. It's because of us. Because of some of the things that we did. Some of what our parents did. Our grandparents, they did some evil things. They went into evil covenant. And it was not broken. So we were born into it. Many of them, they did it to get rich. And so they are rich. But the thing is spiritual. And if you notice anyone that lived their life to please God, that one won't have anything. Only God can bless them. We have to destroy every curse and uproot it so it don't continue. It might skip you. It might skip a generation. It might skip you and happen to your children. So don't think you escape. Pray for your children. Pray that the sickness in your bloodline don't affect your children. Pray that the curses in your bloodline don't affect your children or your children's children. It might, not, it might not happen to your children, but it will happen to their children. So you have to pray. Have you ever noticed sometimes many of the children look alike and there's always one who look like the great grandmother and act like the great grandmother? Or look like the great grandfather? And act like that great grandfather. Yes. Sometimes out of the blue. One of the child. Look like. Someone from the past. In the bloodline. Exactly like that one. And behave it. It's true. It is true. It is true. When I met. When my grandmother was in the hospital on her dying bed. One of my aunt, one of my uncle was there in that hospital. In Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And when they saw my daughter, the last one. They said to me, my daughter look like one of my father's brother. My daughter look exactly like one of my uncle. I don't know him because he died young. Because he had a bad temper. You hear this? They told me that my daughter. Looks like my father's brother. Who I don't know. Who I have never seen. So there is always. And he died prematurely. So I pray for long life upon my daughter. So I, you see there is always someone. In the bloodline. You see, that's not anything you can change. You cannot change the bloodline. But you can stop the curse. From continuing in your bloodline. You cannot change the past. But you have options to sort out your future. Pray that God will help you. My God. Grab your crackers and your water. Whatever you have. We're going to pray now. According to the book of. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It might not happen to you, but you see your sister living that life. It might not happen to you, but you see your brother living that life. Amen. So you see, we have everything to give God thanks for. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 24, the Bible is talking about what Jesus did. Now we are fasting and it's for our children. So we are going to bless our bread and our water so something can happen good to our children. You know, in the book of Job, the Bible said Job prayed to God that even if his children sin, he was asking God to forgive them. Job pray that even if his children sin, he was asking God to forgive his children. So he was so fearful of God. He didn't just pray for himself. 
He asked God to forgive his children of their sins. I don't know if Job knew what kind of sin his children committed. So today we pray that if there is any sin that our children have committed for God to forgive them. The Bible said Job loved God and he hated the devil. And he prayed against the work of the devil. But God allowed the thing to go a different direction. God allowed the devil to touch him. Because he knew the kind of spirit that Job had. That the devil would never win. It doesn't matter what came up against Job. Many of us, we get weak when things go wrong. We don't want to serve God anymore. We, went, we go out in our flesh and begin to do things our way. Because we didn't have... The devil is a liar. According to the word of God. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 24. The Bible said Jesus broke bread and gave thanks. And he said some things. That it should remain with us. He said when you take, go on fasting. It's not for your friends. It's not for pastor. It's for you to remember Jesus Christ. Until he come. The Bible said it's for you to remember Jesus Christ. Until he comes. So let us pray. Let us ask God to breathe afresh upon it. Let us ask God to bless it. Father, we say thank you for what you have done. We thank you for the word that came today. Lord, we thank you for El Shaddai prayer tower. We thank you for this fasting. It's day one. We are praying for the children, Lord God, that anything that's in our bloodline, that it will never affect them. Every curse that's in our bloodline, oh God, remind us our children from it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every sickness and diseases, every bad habit that we have from the bloodline, remind us our children from it. Every bad ways, mighty God. We remove our children from it in the realms of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, breathe afresh upon this element today. Bless it and sanctify it now. And let it be well with our soul. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Jesus. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 24. It said, And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do in remember of me. This do in remember. So you see, Jesus wants you to be reminded of him. So break it and eat it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said, then he pick up the cup, verse 25. He said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Go ahead and drink. My God. What a mighty God we serve. I give honor and praise to God. I just Somebody just go ahead and thank God. You know, it, it, it's a privilege to be able to fast, to set aside time to pray and read the word of God. And we give God thanks. We give God thanks for what he's doing right here. We give him thanks. You see, this is a revelation. A lot of people did not know that these things can happen. The Bible said, like mother like daughter but the thing don't just happen to mother and daughter it, it might not happen to the daughter but it happened to the son's daughter amen it might not yes these things do happen these things do happen it might skip a generation but it go ahead and happen to the son's daughter. So we thank God for the Holy Spirit and what he's doing. 
Amen. And remember, we will continue to pray for our children for the next six days to come. Today is day one. Many of you, you know that something is not right with your child. You know, because you see them and you watch their behavior and their pattern. You know something is not right. So I invite you, you know your story. You know what's going on in your marriage. You know what's going on in your home. And this is the moment when I encourage people that when we are fasting, it's the best time to sow into your problems. Not my problem, your problem. Because when you sow, you will pray about it. Sow into it. When you know you have a seed in the ground, you're enthusiastic that something will come forth. So it will push you. It will propel you to pray. To pray even more. Amen. And if this message is your message, you know that this thing is happening in your family. You know that this thing, you can break it. Don't just sit there and say that I receive. You know what to do. Hallelujah. Said, Pastor, this message is my message. I'm praying for deliverance for my family. I'm praying for breakthrough to come. Now I know why I'm still single. No, I know why my daughter is single. No, I know why my son is single. I'm going to sow into their marriage. Yes, you can. You can sow into your children's marriage. You can sow into your marriage and watch your seed germinate and bear fruit. You can, yes. Listen. The Bible reminds us, united we stand. Divided we fall. Unity brings strength. The reason why many of you don't get along with your siblings, it is the work of the devil to separate family. Don't let the devil win. Don't feed into it. Don't allow the devil to win. Don't feed into it. We don't preach curse, we preach blessings. I want you to succeed. I want you to be blessed. I want your marriage to be blessed. Amen. Many of you, you were married and your, your rings were not even blessed. You just buy the ring and put it on. It's true. Many of you got married and your wedding was not blessed. Your ring was not blessed. Nothing was blessed because you went to that justice of the peace or you yeah, and do it because you didn't want anyone in your business. I encourage you that it cannot, it don't have to be so. It don't have to be so. Amen. Hallelujah. Declare whatever is yours for you and your children. Declare it. Your children is not supposed to watch you suffer. Because their children will watch them suffer. You have to make a difference. The generational blessings begins with you. Let the generational blessing begin with you. Take a step. Step out in faith. My God. Step out in faith. You know what you're going through. You know your situation. You see, one of the reasons why I love fasting. Fasting takes us deeper in the word. Deeper revelations. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I encourage you. It's time for you to get serious. Don't go eat that chicken today. We are not having any meat this week. Amen. It's got to be something different. Vegetables. Whatever you want to eat. But no meat. And said, oh, it's a little piece of fish. Put it in the freezer. Don't eat no meat. It's still meat. The fish is meat. The shrimp, the crab, it's meat. 
If somebody had to kill it before it get to you, it's meat. We're not having any fruits and vegetables. Somebody said, oh, eggs are considered to be vegetarian food. Because the egg can sit there in the fridge for a long, long time. In the shell. And it can sit outside of the fridge as well. So it's a vegetarian food. I'm not going to debate that. I encourage you to lay off the meat for now. Amen. I feel great. I don't know about anyone up here, but I feel great. Amen. Listen to me. If you are on this platform and you find yourself chopping, I'm going to share something with you. If you find that you grab your machete and you begin to chop in the realms of the spirit, it's spiritual. You're chopping off whatever is around you that's not of God. You're chopping it off your children. So even when you get off the live and you feel like praying, grab your machete and keep on chopping. Sometimes some things that they did to you, it's spiritual. So you have to chop it off, chop it out of the root. Kill it. You see, I know a lot of people are afraid of this ministry because I have a sword. But let me tell you this. When your enemy is coming to fight you, they are not coming with bare hands. When your enemies are coming to fight you, they are not coming with bare hands. They are coming with weapons. So when you are fighting in the spirit, fight with weapon. Yesterday I was talking to a woman of God and she said to me, Pastor, you preach a sermon on Saturday and I send it to another woman of God. And Pastor, the woman of God called me and she said she had to watch the broadcast twice and she grabbed her knife and she began to stab in the spirit. You better be doing it. Because many times the only way you can defeat your enemy is in the spirit. You cannot just go and face them and talk. They'll hurt you. You have to win the war in the spirit. So we are fighting with this. It's not gimmicks. This is not gimmicks. So don't because of you see this word you are afraid. Don't be afraid. Because when somebody is coming to hurt you, they will even pay somebody to kill you, chop you up. The Bible said the job of the enemy is to rob, to kill, and to destroy. So you better get your weapon and fight in the spirit. Many of them, we won't see them physically because they are fighting us from behind. God give me this. I don't know if anybody else in this world have any, any, any other woman, woman preacher have a sword. But God give me this. God give me a sword. And I will use it until the day I die. Sometimes when I finish using this sword, I just want to go and sleep. I'm tired. I feel relief. Because I destroy some things in the spirit. So if you want to sit over there. And talk about, oh, Rev have sword. Rev need sword. God give Rev sword. Rev didn't just get sword. God give Rev. Prayer shawl. Anointing oil. Sword. Salt. Holy water. These are the things that God give us. So take advantage of whatever is in this ministry. Amen. Glory to God. Don't let this sword fool you. It's to win battles. Many of you, the reason why you're still around is because God is using me to fight for you even when you're sleeping. I don't tell you. I can't tell you because some of you, you talk too much. Can't tell you anything. You talk too much. And because some of you, you belong to 100 different platforms, I cannot tell you what God is telling me. I just fight for you in this spirit. That's it. Fight for your soul. Because if I say it, you're not going to stop. So I just pray for you. 
and fight for you in the spirit. It's true. Some of you, you connected to so many different pastors. Some of them don't even like you. But I can't say anything. You know, last night I was listening to uh, a man of God and he was talking about some things and I said, look at this. He said a lot of people during COVID, during COVID, they ditch you. They cut you off during COVID. They thought you were going to fail. Some they wait until after COVID, they cut you off and said, oh, pastor, my church is open. I went back to my church. But remember who was dear for you during hardship, okay? Remember who was dear for you during your hardship. Remember who was standing with you during your hardship. That's all I can say. Remember when the doors were closed and you couldn't enter in. Who you went to? Who prayed for you? Who stood by you? Who prayed you up? Remember when you want to give birth and your pastor couldn't handle it. Where did you go? When you could not handle those people at work, who you call? Who did you call? Who prayed for you and your children? Who prayed for that man? For him to calm down. Who was there for you during the hardship? When the devil was haunting you? I can only say what the Lord bring in my spirit to remember. Who was there fighting for you during the beginning of COVID when everybody around you was dying? Jesus. Somebody say, I remember woman of God. Who was fighting for you in the spirit? Who was calling you and praying over the phone with you and your family? Who was lifting you up? Who was making sure you be anointed in the realms of the spirit? Remember where God take you from. Amen. Remember who prayed for you when things were bad. When there was no money coming in, who was praying with you before you start working? Before you received that promotion? Who was holding you up in prayer when you were weak? Remember who God used to be a blessing to you and your family when things were bad. Remember who God used to speak life into that situation. Into that dead situation. Remember who God used to pray for you. To start your business. Remember who you used to call. And ask them to please. Remember me and my children in prayer. Remember who used to stay up late at night. Remember where God picked you from. Many of you, you run because of COVID. Many of you know that you're strong and you're back on your feet, you're hiding. Just remember who God used to bless you when no one else was there. Hallelujah. Just remember who God used. Amen. Hallelujah. My time is up. I have to go. If it touches your heart to be a blessing to the ministry, Remember, we are still doing our El Shaddai wallet. People of God, it's time to stretch forth your hands and be a blessing. And it's my prayer that the Lord will bless those of you who remember kindness. Those of you who the Lord have touched to be a blessing to the ministry. May the Lord bless you in abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Many of you. When there was nothing going on, you lost your job because of COVID. You came and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. Many of you, your job were at stake. And we prayed and we prayed. God said, remember where he picked you from. Remember who he used, where you could go to receive strength, to receive that word, to encourage you and your family. God said, don't forget. Amen. My time is up. I have to go. Stay blessed.
Remember, no meat, seven days. Hallelujah.